Hey everybody, thank you very much for being patient working with me and uh, allowing my family to adjust to having three kids rather than two. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, it's been amazing, um, and uh, I thought I might share with you what uh, I've been up to. So here is uh, Declan Riley Stewart, he's uh, a cute guy. Um, and I'll just share, I guess, a few pictures. Here he is. He's uh, mostly sleeping a lot of the time. Um, and here, let me bring this to the front so you can see it. And there he is again. Here I thought he looked kind of like a Marvel superhero with a troubled past, the scar over his eye. So I thought that was a fun picture. And uh, speaking of uh, superheroes, a friend of mine, I guess he was playing with his kids, and he made this, uh, and he uh, he tagged me in it on a Facebook picture, so I thought that was fun. Uh, but yeah, that's been my last three days. <laughs> it's been uh, a little baby, and uh, me as Batman, and, uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, but now, let's get into algebra, and we're going to be talking about uh, function notation, and, uh, and parent functions, and uh, families of functions, uh, which seems appropriate. Uh, Alright, so first function notation, uh, we'll get into uh, what it is and why it is. Uh, so look at these three functions and uh, we're going to you know, want to talk about them and use them and, um, and eventually we're going to want to combine them together and that kind of thing. And it becomes difficult to talk about them because if I say, look at that function over there, there's three of them, how do I distinguish one from the other? So that's one of the main things that function notation is going to do. Uh, so how would I distinguish them from one from another? So I might uh, you know, change their colors. And I'll make that one the red one. We got a green one. We'll make this a blue one, right? Okay, so now they're distinguished from each other in some way. We could talk about the green one. Put five in there for x, or uh, let in the red one let y be seven, and then figure out what x is and that kind of thing. Uh, but we don't, uh, as mathematicians, walk around with colored pens all the time, so. Uh, we don't really have these colors at our disposal, so that's not how we're going to deal with the issue of uh, how do we tell the difference between each of these. Um, how we are going to deal with that is to give them each different names, just like we would with people. We're going to give them all different names. So we'll go ahead and get rid of these Y's because it's just too generic. Okay, so we'll just give them different names. We're going to call this one F and this one G and this one H. That's the main thing about function notation, or one of the main things. Uh, it's just a way to give them names. No big deal, okay? Um, now I can say, look at G, let's put 5 into the X of G, and let's uh, put 12 in for X in the function H. And now we have a way to talk about them and distinguish them one from another, okay? Um, but that's not all. While we're up to uh, this, while we're changing how we talk about functions, um, I'm kind of move these over, give myself a little room, because not only am I going to give them names, I'm now going to uh, do something, and this is the source of most confusion, if there's confusion about function notation. I'm going to call each of these not just f, not g, not just h, but f of x. That means a function of x. If f is a function of x, it means that x is the input. That's all it means. If g is a function of x, then x is the input. If h is a function of, so maybe you can get the idea a little better, if h is a function of t, then t is the input. So what you see here is just telling you what each function is a function of. It's a function of x, it's a function of t, this one might be a function of time, this one might be a function of distance. Um, we have g is a function of x. Okay, That's how we say that. Now, don't be mistaken, this does not mean g times x. It does, well, that's the main thing that people think that it means. It does not mean that. It does not mean g times x. I know that's confusing because g, parentheses x, typically means g times x, but it doesn't mean that here. Okay, Here it just means that g is the name of the function, it's a function of x, meaning that x is the input. 
Okay, so why would we even do this? Why why would uh, why, why would we bother with the this confusing notation? Um, the main thing is if I want to plug in 17 for x in f, that's kind of a mouthful. But if I just write this, it says all of that. It says I want to put in 17 for the input variable. Okay, that's good. Where in the function f, right? Just a few pen strokes, and I know that I'm supposed to take 17 and put it right there. Not there, not there, but in here, okay? Um, and it it's, kind of says a, a few more profound things than that, but that is essentially it, okay? So f of 17, what is that? It just means plug 17 in for, I just said four, and I was about to write four. Plug in 17 for x in the function we've given the name f, okay? Uh, so what we have, 51 minus seven, so, 44, okay? Um, just double check on my math on that. And that's it. Um, that's all f of 17 means. It, don't be confused, it does not mean um, 3x times 17 minus seven or 3x minus seven times 17. This is what happens a lot. We think this is multiplication. It's not multiplication, it just means plug this in for x in f. Go to the function f and plug in this for x, okay? So the first thing I want you to do is practice this a bit. So let me clear the way. Get rid of all this stuff. Now that you know what function notation is, and that, let me just reiterate, it's a name. And let's say a, a way to tell you what to plug in, plug in. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna give you a few things to do. I want you to uh, hit pause on this and uh, do these things here, okay? And, and once you pause it and, and go through it, uh, I'll go through it. So go ahead and pause it and uh, work through these uh, for a few minutes. Okay, hopefully uh, I did not just awkwardly pause for a long time, but uh, uh, you paused the video and you have worked through these. So let's work through them together. All right, f of three, f of three. That just means plug in three for x in f. So three times three minus seven. That's nine minus seven, that's two. All right, g of 12. That means in the function g, plug in 12. Replace, you can see x has been replaced with 12, so these all, any other x's you see should be replaced with 12. So that's 3 fourths times, I'm gonna put 12 over one. A little easier to think of that way. Plus four. Okay, well 12 and four, they cross cancel, most of the three, so I get nine plus four, and that's 13. And h of 18 means plug in 18 for, well in this case, t, right? Because h is a function of t. t is the uh, deciding variable, the independent variable. All right, so negative 7 ninths times, I like to write it as 18 over 1 plus 5. So cross cancel with the 9, we get a 2. So we get negative 7 times 2, negative 14 plus 5 equals negative 9. That's it. That's all that notation means. It's not tricky at all. Uh, just plug this in for x and see what happens. So we've done that lots of times. We call it evaluating the function uh, for the given value, okay? And that's exactly the same thing here, all right? But the instructions might say something like uh, find this. It just means plug in 7 into this x because this x is in the function f, and look, that says f right there. Or uh, find h of 14, you know, and it just means plug 14 in for t. That's all it means, okay? So on to the next idea. Here we want to talk about when we see phrasing like the value of the function, okay? The value of the function, or the function is worth, or the function has a value of blank. Okay, or any variation of anything like this, um, we want to understand what that means. Okay, 
And when we say the value of the function, the function is worth, the function is a value, uh, we could replace things like the function with y. Okay? Uh, the function is worth, y is worth. The function has a value of, y has a value of. Okay, when you hear the function, the function, when you think about it, what is a function? We've talked about this a lot of times. Function uh, is just input, output. The entire meaning uh, of life for a function is to take input and turn it into output. Okay, so um, I was going to get into some silly analogy, but if if a function exists to make output. That's what it exists to do. Then its value, its worth, is whatever its output is. Uh, so if we say that the value of the function is 7, okay, so let's say f of x equals 2x minus 3. Okay, so if the value of the function is 7, that means that whatever happened here, whatever we plugged in for x, the value of the function is, uh, is 7. I think I was saying 7 just a second ago. Okay. So the value of the function, the output of the function, is 7. Okay, Then we can go about figuring out what this is worth. This is a fairly simple equation. I think you can handle solving it. x would have to be 5 for the value of the function to be 7. Okay, Another way to say this is f of x is 7. If you remember from this previous page here, I replaced every y with an f of x, g of x, h of t. Right? We're just placing y replacing y with a new notation, a new way of really just saying y, right? How come, you know, why do we replace y with all these things? Again, to give it a name and to also give you a, a quick, easy way to say, to plug this value into this function, okay? But when we say the value of the function is, if the function has a value of, or the, the, the function is worth something, we're saying that the output, okay, remember that this, Right here is the output. It's just like y. It's just we don't say y anymore. We say f of x, we say g of x, we say h of x, we say s of t, we say a lot of different functions. Okay. Um, so if we say the value of the function is 7, or the function is worth 7, we mean the output is. Okay. Um, so why don't you, I'll take and say g of x equals 3x minus 4. Okay. And I'll say find x if the function is worth 9. Okay. Uh, here, let's call it, let's call it 11, not 9. If the function is worth 11. So again, pause this video for uh, you know a couple minutes. If the function is worth 11, find x. Find x if the function is worth 11. Go ahead and pause the video and do that now. Okay, so uh, hopefully we have, have worked on that for a bit. If the function is worth 11, and the function, when you say the value of the function is its output, output is the value of the function, uh, then 11 is the output, and here is the part of the the function that tells you what the output will be. It gives you the output when you plug in a value of x. Right. So if you want to figure out what that value of x is, we'll add 4 to both sides. 15, 3x, divide by 3, and x equals 5. So the function was worth 11, meaning the output was worth 11, and the input was worth 5. Okay, So Big deal there. The value of the function, if you can remember that, that'll help you out a lot. The value of the function, y. The function is worth. That's y. Y has a value of blank. Okay. All right, last thing. All right, hopefully, kind of an easy day today. Um, we're going to talk about parent functions, families of functions. All right, so here is the parent of all linear functions. A linear function would be a function that you graph and hey it turns out to be a line. Okay. So um, this is called the parent function because it's the 
you know, the basis, the foundation of all linear functions. It's the most basic. Uh, any other function that's like this one will just be an alteration of this function. It will have it, this function's genetic code in it, okay? So let's take a look at some other linear functions that uh, are children of this function. And we'll see how they compare to this one here. So let's say uh, g of x, because this is a different function. We don't want to confuse it with f, so we'll give it a different name. g of x equals 5x. OK, how's that going to be different from this function over here? Uh, again, if you have no idea what a graph is supposed to look like, then just plot some points. I couldn't emphasize that more. I could not pass upon any better advice to you in general for graphing than plot some points. How do we plot points? Well, we know each point represents an input and an output, so we're going to find some input and output, right? Um, so we put in some x's and y's, and I'll put in 0, and I'll put in 1, 2, and 3. I'll put in, I just said 3, I didn't write 3. Negative 1, negative 2, OK, real simple. 5 times 0. 0. 5 times 1, 5. 5 times 2, 10. 5 times 3, 15. 5 times negative 1, negative 5. 5 times negative 2, negative 10. No problem. All right, so 0, 0. Oh, that's, that's a similarity between uh, the parent function. Uh, it goes through the origin. So that's something to notice. Uh, OK, so x is 1, y is 5. x is 1, y is 5. By the way, just to reiterate what we did in the last page, the value of the function at this point is 5. When I put in 1, the value of the function is 5. Okay, The value of the function is output. Uh, 2, uh, g of 2. Let's, write, let's, let's review that. g of 2 is what? What do I get when I plug in 2 into the x of g? It's 10. g of 2 is 10. g of 2 is 10. So there we go. And I don't have enough room to graph g of 3, because g of 3 is 15. Uh, so let's come back the other way. Negative 1 gives me negative 5. The value of the function at negative 2 is negative 10. And uh, we start to get the idea. Yeah? So we graph this line. How does that compare to this? Well, as we said, the, uh, the, it's similar that they go through the origin. But the difference here would be that this one, we call it steeper. Let's say it's steeper. Uh, so that would be a, a difference. It's similar that it goes through the, uh, the origin, but it's steeper. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get rid of this guy. Let's get rid of those there. Let's say we put a plus three on there. G of x is five x plus three. Okay. I'll do some inputs and outputs again. I don't know what this function is supposed to look like, or I'm pretending that I don't. Um, though we we should. We have talked about what slope intercept form. Okay. Here's slope intercept form. Plug in zero for x. Way way easy to do. Plug in, in this case, 1 for x. That would be the next easiest thing to plug in for. I don't want to plug in a half. I don't want to plug in 3 quarters. Right Between 0 and, well, after 0, let's say, the next easiest number to plug in would be 1. But you could plug in all sorts of numbers between 0 and 1, but uh, we don't want to plug those fractions in. We like to get to the next whole number. Very easy. Okay, And uh, that's, that's basically what slope-intercept form is, plugging in the two easiest values to plug in and finding their outputs. Okay. Um, well, of course, if I plug in 0, I'm going to get 3. That's how I know this is always the y-intercept. That number that it doesn't ha does not have an x attached to it is going to be the only thing left when I plug in 0. So I know that's the y-intercept, the place where it crosses the y-axis. So that's different, different from the parent function. Uh, how about if I plug in 1? I'm going to get uh, 10 plus 3, or sorry, 5 plus 3. That's going to be 8. 8. So I plug in 1, and I get out 8. That's going to be right. Uh, well, that's interesting. You know, if we, you know, if you were to rewind the video and go back and look at just 5x, this line, well, it would be parallel to that line, right? It would have the same slope, um, right, right alongside it. So it has the same slope. It goes up 5 and over 1, up 5 and over 1. Remember, this is the slope. That's the slope there. So we connect these guys here. We continue this line uh, down. Uh, in this direction forever, in this direction forever, we have our line. Well, how is it similar? It's a line, so it's part of the family of linear functions. Okay, Family of linear functions. What's the family of linear functions? Any function that's gra whose graph is a line. 
Uh, but in pretty much every other way, uh, it's different. It is a line, but it's different in that uh, its y-intercept is different. It intersects at 3 rather than at 0. Uh, its slope is bigger, so the line itself is steeper. And those are the kinds of things we're looking for when we compare it to f of x equals x. When you talk about the parent function, just y equals x or f of x equals x. So uh, as you go and graph those, remember, review that slope-intercept form if you've forgotten. Um, let me do one real quick that does not have such an easy slope, like 5. Okay, just real quickly, let's say h of t. No, that's not going to be good because we have, you can see it's labeled already x-axis. So we'll just go with x. h of x equals um, 3 fourths x minus 5. I bet you if you asked a random person to come up with a, a fraction, they'd probably come up with 3 fourths. It's just a theory of mine. Uh, okay, so if you know your slope-intercept form, you know this is the y-intercept. So we go, we put a point down there at negative 5. Why do we know that? Not because it's magic, but because what are we really doing there? We're just choosing the easiest value to plug in for x. That would be 0. Right? 0 clearly is going to give you negative 5. Okay, then I follow my slope. I go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. The over 4 part, that's the key to understanding the slope. I'm just going to not 1, not 2, not 3, not 4. Well, not, not, not 4. Yes, 4. We are plugging 4 in for x. Why in the world would we do that? Because the denominator of this fraction is 4, and we'd like it to get canceled out, right? 3 fourths times 4 over 1. Look at that. That's nice. We get 3 minus 5, right? So that's going to be negative 2. Oh, what a surprise. We get 4, negative 2. All right. If we were to continue that pattern on and on and on to, to not just to 4, but to 8, to 12, to 16, to... Uh, to 20, to 24, and so on. We would notice that every time we move over a unit of 4, we move up 3, right? Over 4, up 3. Over 4 to 8, up 3 to positive 1. I bet if we plug in 8, we're going to get a positive 1, uh, which would just be 3 more than negative 2. Let's just try it. 3 fourths times 8 over 1, cross cancel. We're left with a 3. So 3 times 2 is 6 minus 5 is 1. 6 minus 5 is 1. So yeah, it does follow that pattern. Over 4, up 3. Okay, we compare it to this guy. How is it uh, different? Well, how's it the same? It's a line. That's the only way in which it is the same. How is it different? Well, it intersects the y-axis at negative 5 instead of 0, right? It's down here at negative 5. And its slope, its slope is smaller, right? The slope is a slope of up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Its slope is 1 over 1 times x, right? 1 over 1. Uh, so its slope is smaller. 3 fourths is smaller than 1. So the line we would describe as uh, less steep, not as steep. Okay, So it intercepts the y-axis at negative 5, and it's not as steep as this line here. All right, so just give little descriptions like that when it asks you to compare to f of x equals x. And that's it. That's all we have. Um, I may have gone a little longer than necessary, but hopefully that means that uh, everybody uh, had it explained to them well. All right, so remember, let's just run back here real quick. My baby's adorable. Also, um, function notation just gives a name to a function and a way to tell you what to plug in. Okay, really quickly, g of 12 means plug in 12 for the x in g. That's a, that's a mouthful that this communicates. That's why we use it. That's why we use function notation. Uh, the value of the function. When, we, when you hear something like that, keep your, your, your ears peeled, your ears open, for things like the value of the function is, the function is worth, the function has a value of. When, it's, when it refers to the function, and some value, some number, it's talking about the output of the function. Okay, So if the function has some value, it means that you've put something in, and what's come out is this. The function is worth whatever its output is. Okay, And uh, families of functions, families of linear functions, any function that's a line is part of the family of linear functions. Um, and this is the parent function. Any other function that's a line has the genetic code of this guy here. This one has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. And uh, if we change the slope and y-intercept, we kind of mess with the, the DNA a little bit. But ultimately, it is a line. It's from that, uh, that family. All right, that's it. Um, if you have questions, uh, help each other out. Uh, hopefully, you have plenty of time to work on the homework right now. Um, and 
have fun today. I look forward to seeing you again when I am back on Wednesday with you guys. So thanks a lot. Bye.